Frank Phillips has joined their ranks, posing as a sympathetic vicar from Bolton. Today, clergymen for the countryside are holding a meeting here at St Mary's Vicarage in Shifton, and we thought they might appreciate our telling them that one of the clerics in their midst has in fact been sent to spy on them. Let's see. No, no, I don't care how committed she is. I'm not lying down in front of a with a woman priest. Hello, can I help you? Yes, may we come in, please? Uh, well, we're in the middle of a meeting, actually. Thanks very much. Is it through here? Uh, oh, 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 if it's about the yodeling competition, my wife is in the village hall. Right, thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, Frank Phillips. Mr. Phillips, Frank Phillips. Uh, no, we do, know it, we do know it's you, Mr. Phillips, yeah. Phillips, yeah. Phillips, because we followed you here from your home. Look, is this going to take long? Only I've got a dying man, Well, it says, I, th I think you might find this of interest, Reverend. Uh, this man has, in fact, been sent to spy on you. Now, he's not always a vicar. <laughs> Yesterday, he was a Cossack dancer. Last week, he was a tramp. And before that, he was pretending to be Scottish. <laughs> They're on day release. Ah. Miss, it's a project we got them. Mr. Phillips, we're coming along you very well. Have a bit of Oh, Jesus! Whatever happened to excuse me? Um, I suppose I'm... There's no excuse for my friend, John. You right? Hey, Mr. Phillips, you can't... You can't get away with me. Take a look at me taking down the tires on your car. So, Mr. Phillips, Mr. Phillips, please... Mr. Phillips, why won't you talk to us about the IFI? I think you are to the public to tell us. Why don't you leave the vicar alone? He's not a vicar, oh, he's a spy. Not... It's all right. Let's talk about the time you spent in an alien spaceship. Can I have a little bit there? Mr. Phillips, please, please can't get in there, please. <laughs> Miss Matthews, <laughs> hey, he obviously oh, does man, does obviously not want you. Give us a little bit. Uh, I have the captain. You ask. Now, Mr. Phillips, there are any angry with me because I wouldn't let them give you a wedding. He doesn't want to give you a lift. Look, Mr. Williams, what? Now, please, Alex. What? Now, what have you done? Just a minute, old boy. Grand Stevenson Snail Pose. Listen, I'm a friend of your mother's sister. What? Come along now. Can you come back, please? What have you done with Grand Stevenson Snail Pose? Now, that's... It's no good stonewalling. We have Look. blown your cover. All You're right. on television. Yes, you all right, it. all right. What have you done? What have you done? <laughs> two-way thing, basically. We give you names, you give us names. You can put your own relatives on the blacklist if you like. In fact, a lot of our clients regard that as one of the major perks of being a member. Right. The IFI don't give interviews. This man, Colin Gould, Midlands Area Director of the IFI, wouldn't be speaking to me if he knew who I was. That's why when we invited him round to an office we'd rented in Birmingham for the purpose, I was in disguise, pretending to be a businessman who'd just moved into the area and who was interested in finding out what the IFI had to offer. For obvious reasons, we chose not to warn him that he was going to be filmed. Just goes to show, can't be too careful. Mm. There's some, this vetting service you mentioned, if I, if I say had uh, an employee that I wanted you to vet, uh, how would you go about that? Obviously we'd find out if he had a criminal record. We'd tap his phone, go through his dustbin, follow him around for a bit. We'd probably go and see his granny, dressed as gas men. <laughs> There's loads we could do. But one thing we couldn't do, though, is burgle him. I mean, apart oh, from... So that, no, so, sorry, um, so, so you, you don't do burglaries? No, I mean, we do, but we've got a huge backlog at the moment. And our chap is working... Well, he's working very hard, but, I mean, there's a heck of a waiting list. Uh, while we're on the subject, one thing we don't do, and we don't do it because we believe it will be quite wrong, is we don't carry out industrial espionage on behalf of one client company against another. We believe that will be totally unethical. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say we couldn't put you in touch with someone who can. And it wouldn't be cowboys either. I mean, we always deal with the most reputable people in this area. We know that because we've had them thoroughly burgled ourselves. Mm. During our conversation, Colin Gould also told me about other services the IFI offers its client companies. IFI run management courses, for example, which typically take place over a weekend at lavish country hotels like this one. So what, these are, these are residential courses, are they? <sighs> well, we find we just can't run enough of them, you know. I've got long letters from clients saying how impressed they were with them, mm. how it's changed their perspective on management, yes. and how much intellectual stimulation they've derived from them. Yes. Of course, if you do decide to go on, for heaven's sake, wear an old pair of trousers, because on the first night there's always a food fight, and those French sauces are a devil to get out, aren't they? Right, yes, yes. <laughs> Well, you know what businessmen are like, so we always slip the staff a couple of extra quid, in case anyone dives through a closed window during horsey-horsey or something like that, so there's rarely any bad feeling. Right. 
some of the lectures are quite useful too. Uh, we do one called uh, Sexual Harassment and How to Get Away with It. It's always a great favourite. Terribly practical. <laughs> but for many businessmen, the attraction of the IFI lies in its role as a pressure group which operates entirely on their behalf. It's been involved in a number of campaigns over the years. Um, safety in the workplace, for example, which, of course, it's against. This is Mesley Engineering, a light engineering company in Essex, and for many years, a substantial contributor to IFI funds. In 1986, a nasty accident at the factory resulted in one man nearly losing his arm. Afterwards, his workmate, in a severe state of shock, asked the foreman why there hadn't been a guard on the machine. Both men were placed on the IFI blacklist. Look, what we're talking about here is whether or not management should be allowed to manage. Henry, no, no, let me finish. It. Because if management is not going to be allowed to manage, and who will? Answer me that. Mr. Hanley, do you honestly think it was fair to put two of your employees on an employment blacklist simply because one of them questioned whether or not there should have been a guard on the machine that caused the injury? Blacklist? What are you talking Mr. about? Hanley, what you blacklist? know the IFI blacklist, the blacklist which you personally added their names to, the blacklist of which we have since been able to obtain a copy. I think we're in danger here of getting bogged down in specific cases. I'd rather talk in more general terms. Now, to return to my no, point well, about return management... Point in a moment. If I could talk first about the accident rate at your factory. Over the past four years, there have been no less than 810 separate incidents which resulted in serious injury to your employees. These are specific cases. 810, Mr. Handley? Yes, 810 uh, specific yes, cases. And over half of those cases, the injured employee was subsequently placed on the IFI blacklist. Weak management? Is that what you're advocating? No, I'm not talking about weak management. I'm merely pointing out your factory's appalling safety record. Our safety record is second to none. Mr. Hanley, it's 596. Well, I don't know where you got that from. Well, we got it from the league table for safety standards in engineering industries. Your factory is 596. It's two off the bottom. And both of those make high explosives. You make bicycle saddles. No one cares more about safety than I do. Mr. Hanley, I, I certainly hope that people do because you manifestly care so little about it that even as your injured employees are being rushed to hospital, you're having them blacklisted by the IFI on reception. Look, I don't think we're going to get anywhere if we continue to dwell on specific cases. Well, we're not going to get anywhere unless you actually... The general principle, which no one can... Argue. Industrialists are not the IFI's only supporters. It also has friends in government, as can be clearly seen from this list of IFI employees, all of whom at one time or another have received an honour from the Queen. 